How to block the jab cross hook. One, two, three. We have all of this stuff in the MMA basics course, how to do every kind of block that you're gonna need for the basic stuff. If you're interested in this, just click that link and you'll be able to get access to everything. All right, now, the basic rule of blocking. His hand on this side of his face is blocked by the hand on the same side. The nose is the center line, so this is always blocked by this. Doesn't matter if I'm orthodox or southpaw. Closed stance or open stance. This is blocked by this. We're gonna cover both of these situations in this video. Stay tuned for the southpaw after. All right, so he throws the jab. I'm using this backhand to block. I take my hand from home position. Closed stance, this is my home position. Thumb knuckle, this one, on my cheek, right in the corner of my mouth. Hand is at a 45 degree angle. Front hand frames my hairline. Elbow is down and in. From that home position, my hand is going to travel in front of my mouth as he jabs. It's going to catch his hand kind of like it's catching a baseball. I'm not pulling it down. I'm not swiping it to the inside because that's more committed. If I do this and he faked it, I'm going to end up over there, which now he can hit me. I want to do this. And now I don't want to, if he was far away, I don't need to go and block. Because if this hand gets too far away from my face, I can't block his secondary target, which if he fainted me on the jab, now the hook is open. I keep my hands very close to my face. Now, also, my legs are going to do something. I'm not just going to stay super static and just block like that. I also need to do this. See, my back leg is bending at the ankle and the knee. That will help me to absorb the punch and also load the spring for my counter. When he throws a jab, I block like that. Now, when I'm blocking the jab, I also have my hand ready to block the cross. Half the time I see people doing this. This isn't a good idea. I'm just gonna faint the jab and I'm gonna throw the cross and you're gonna eat it. Keep both hands up while blocking. Unlike slipping, there is no benefit to dropping one hand or the other when you're blocking. I call that scissoring your blocks. Don't scissor your blocks. After the jab, it's gonna come the cross. I block that jab, and now I block the cross. The cross is picked off by this forearm. But jab, I can just use my palm because it's not a very strong punch, but the cross has a, a lot of oomph behind it, so I need a bigger bone to pick it off. I do not lift my elbow up. That exposes my body more. I keep my shoulder as tight as I can so that this hole is smaller. And unlike the jab, when I jab, I'm putting my weight a little bit more on my, when I block the jab, sorry, my weight's going on the back foot. When I block the cross, my weight goes to the front foot. Jab, cross. I don't absorb the cross, I smother it. You can think of as I brace for impact. That's gonna load this leg, which then allows me to throw off of that leg with a hook for my counter. So when he throws the one, two, And you can see when that is hitting my arm, it's gonna kinda kapwing off that way. Because his arm goes over there, now that opens up this side for my counter. Now the three, after the two, usually comes the three. The three I find is the one that people have the hardest time blocking with this system because it is so important especially in a closed stance, that my shoulder is in front. If my lead shoulder is pointing forwards, I expose my center line a lot less, which especially in closed stance is very, very important. Can be important in open as well, but closed it's hyper important, okay, because of the direction of the power punches that are coming in. I block the jab, I go like this, I block the cross, I go like this. And then when I block the hook, I go like that. So these are all very small, very subtle movements. My weight is going back foot, front foot, back foot. I block that hook by elbow tight, elbow connects to hip bone, hand connects to head, 
like that, which is different than this. Okay? This is what most people want to do when they block the hook. They want to kind of roll and twist, which is still a thing. I'm not saying you can't do that ever. I just would prioritize that less highly. I would rank that lower in the hierarchy of blocks. Okay, so when he throws the one, two, three, boom, boom, boom. I'm going right to the side like that. Weight is going into the back toe. Lead shoulder is still pointing at my target. That's why this back hand can't go too far away. It needs to be able to cover the second line of attack. Home position, why I've established this as home position is it is directly between blocking for the jab and blocking for the hook. Now, this is something that you can really use. This elbow position, my elbow is not like this when I block the hook because my body is open still. He could hit me with liver shot. Here's my hip bone. Okay, my elbow, my elbow clunks on my hip bone. You can feel that connection. If your elbow is anywhere else than on your hip bone, the liver shot is open. So it needs to be like that. And as you can see, when I'm blocking, my hands are open. I'm not keeping my hands open like this. I'm gonna feel most of that impact. My hands are open and my wrists are at punching angle, which helps because when I go to punch, I don't have to correct anything. But it also helps me to absorb some of the impact in the wrist. It's mainly the wrist that is going to absorb that shot. Now, anytime you're blocking anything, anytime you're punching, these shoulders have to be up. You can have all this stuff down, but if you have these giant gaps here and here, it's just your hand and arm aren't enough to cover the whole space. And even if you do everything perfectly, you still won't be able to cover the entire space perfectly. There's always a little hole, which is why everybody is always vulnerable and nobody is unbeatable. So just earth plane problems. But in this closed stance, blocking the one, two, three, looks like that. Super subtle movements. Back, forward, back. And if you do this block properly, that hook block, it actually, because the one and the two are usually long punches, right? And then the hook is a short punch, shorter anyway, a lot of the time that hook will miss you, right? And it'll go by and then your counter's the same anyway and your leg's already loaded for it. This is completely different than how you would block this if you were in an open stance, which is why I don't recommend People try to learn both stances simultaneously from the get-go. At least not unless you're very young and have a lot of time. Even then, my kids, the students that I teach that are 5 years old, 10 years old, 14 years old, I don't give them all the information all at once. I make them learn one stance first. I put their power hand in the back first and I teach them like that. And then after a few years, at least three, I'll start teaching them the flip side of that. So now we're in an open stance. In an open stance, it's not as important to keep your center line closed like that. Having your short lead shoulder in the front isn't necessarily as beneficial. It can actually get you more hurt because the danger just comes from a different place. The danger comes from here. We're just talking about punching right now, but kicking is very similar. Okay, the danger comes from there. So the more bladed my shoulders are, the actually the more my head lines up with that back shoulder. The more square my shoulders are, my head lines up with the front shoulder. Because the power is not going towards my front arm, right? Close stance, the power is going right into this front arm. So in close stance, me reaching out with this hand is quite dangerous. If he throws an overhand, bang, that's gonna be a big issue. In the open stance, things change a little bit. Now the power is over there. So this hand has a little bit of ability to float in and out. I still don't recommend putting it down, but I can go bring it out and I can hand fight a lot to deal with this front arm. So I won't do this, I'll kind of do that. My shoulders are square. This is my home position 
in the open stance, right? My front arm is floating out more like this and it is covering the line of his hand. Wherever his hand goes, my hand just kind of shadows it so that if he throws it, it's just gonna go right into that hand, which is kind of what it's organized, what the organization of the skeletons makes it do anyway. It just, that's why it's hard to jab in open stance because the hand is just, goes right into the arm slash hand anyway. Okay, so this is out. Now my back hand, doesn't need to be here for home position because the punches aren't coming from over here, they're coming from over here. I'm gonna block here, right? So my hand is organized like it's meant to kind of block a hook, if that's what you wanna think of it, in a closed stance. It would be like a hook block, essentially. So it's on the side of my face. My shoulders are much more square. My weight is a little bit more on my front leg. When he throws his jab, I'm gonna parry it down just a little bit. Don't, don't bring your whole arm down. It's too committed an action. He can come over with the hook. I can do this and it's not so risky. And it's very, very difficult for him to jab me through that block. The cross now, when he throws the cross, okay, my hand isn't strong enough to come out here and just patty cake that thing, okay? It's not a jab. This isn't safe. It's gonna go right into your head. I'm gonna have to twist. I'm gonna have to take that forearm and twist it forward a little bit in order to get my forearm in front of the punch. My weight here is being carried by the quadricep of my back leg. My weight isn't on the front leg, it's on the back. And that stabilizes me there. So I'm bracing for impact on the back foot, which would give me a, a front hook or a lead hook counter. So if he throws the one, two, and after we patty cake that jab, and as I'm twisting on the hook, this hand comes back here. I don't wanna keep it out here and do that because what happens after two, three? We don't want to get caught with that three. So he throws the one, two, boom, boom. And now when he throws the hook, I crunch, boom, like that. I crunch to the side, which is a similar way that I would block the three in a closed stance, crunching to the side. Just now it's on my front leg and front arm. So when he throws the one, two, three, bang. The counters are a little bit different. The, uh, uh, the opportunities are a little bit different, but that's how I see the two stances working. And like I said before, like there's many different ways to block. This is not exhaustive. This is just what I believe to be the first blocks and the first ways you should understand blocking from each of these stances. Okay, so if you have any comments, questions, drop them in the comment section, right? And as always, like, subscribe, hit that bell. Peace out. If you want to fight in MMA like this right now, this is the perfect time to sign up for my Pro Fight Guide. Every single video that I ever release, including the anti-wrestler guide, which is like 70 plus videos. We got the MMA basics course that we're building right now, getting new videos out there every single week. This is my 22 years of MMA experience bottled up in one package. I fought in the UFC. I train elite guys. Ali Wasuk just won the belt. BFL bantamweight champion. If you want to be like this guy, get into this course right now. You also get access to my private community. You'll be able to talk directly to me. Send me things that you're struggling with. Say you're getting armbarred by everybody, getting smashed by wrestlers, you're getting ground and pounded. Whatever the situation is, let me know and I will personally help you. I can send you videos. You can send me your training videos, but I'm not letting too many more people in, so get in now before we close it off forever.